Hey YouTube, it's me, Aaliyah Simone Style, coming back to you with yet another word from the Lord, and I think this one's going to bless you today. Stay tuned. So today we're going to be speaking of the story of Aaron and the golden calf, and if you're not familiar with this story, go over to the book of Exodus 12, and we're going to be speaking about it today. So to start off the story, as we know, the Lord had delivered the people of Israel from Egypt. So now they're no longer slaves. They're no longer in this place where they are bound and have to make bricks without straw and all of these things. Now they're actually free. They've walked across the ocean on dry land and they have seen the Lord do miraculous miracles for them. So now Moses had gone up into the mountains in order to be with the Lord and the people are looking at Aaron and they're like, hey Aaron, we want a God to serve. Can you please make us something to worship? these people who were delivered were slaves right so when we think about it how did these slaves get all this gold like they're slaves they were they were imprisoned they were impoverished in Egypt how did they get access to gold in the first place well go over to Exodus 12 and 35 and it says now the Israelites had acted in accordance with the word of Moses and they had asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they gave them what they asked so they plundered the Egyptians and all of those things so here's the crazy part imagine you serve a really ridiculous boss and your boss is so mean and he does not like you or anything that you do and he just makes your life harder imagine walking into that boss's office one day and be like hey can I get a $30,000 a $30, raise for this month thank you very much and he's like okay sure, sure yeah no problem that's literally the same type of thing that happened here. Only the difference is that these people were slaves, they were being beaten and whipped. And out of nowhere, the Lord softens the heart of the Egyptians that hated the Israelites. And God literally allowed for the Egyptians to, to say yes to whatever they asked for. They asked for clothes, silver, gold, their cattle, and they were like, yes, 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 to all these things that they're asking of. And this is unheard of, right? So now we know that the Lord is truly just molding and shaping the hearts of the Egyptians. So if there's a, an issue that's happening in your life, maybe there is a boss, maybe there is a person who is above you, don't stop praying. Understand that God can soften the heart of any king the the word says that the heart of the king is in the hands of the lord so please understand and know that the more you pray the lord can and will deliver you from that situation or soften the heart of the person who has this authority over you so just a chapter beforehand moses came down from the mountain and has given these people specific instructions on how to live now that they are not slaves anymore now that they don't have the rules of the egyptians ruling over them anymore how are you supposed to act how are you supposed to live the law so moses this is literally getting downloaded information from the Lord and he is listing it every, everything out to them as he is receiving. The people had given a vow and said, yes, we are going to be those people of the Lord. We're going to listen. We're going to do exactly what the Lord said, right? So just remember that. And this is before they asked Aaron for a golden calf. So now here we go. One chapter later, they're like, hey, Aaron, can you give us a God to worship? Because we don't know what's going to come of Moses. So Aaron doesn't even flinch he doesn't even put up an argument he doesn't even put up a fight Aaron is like okay sure yeah let me just go ahead and do it so he says to everybody take off all the gold jewelry that you have and I'm gonna put it into this fire and mold it into something so all the jewelry that they had gotten from the Egyptians they're taking it off and they're like yeah put it in the fire do what you want to do they are quite literally misusing the favor that God had given them God gave them the gift of favor from the Egyptians and they have taken it wasn't even their jewelry it wasn't even theirs they just took it and threw it in the fire and said do what you will with it and that's the thing the enemy wants you to always just go ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do and without you consulting God without you consulting wise counsel the enemy is always going to drive you to your own desires but understand that God may drive you away from your own desires but just know that it's going to be a better plan and whatever the favor that he's giving you it's intended for a purpose so just a chapter beforehand, the Lord had given Moses instructions on, on making an ark of incense for the Lord to get glory to God. Well, that means that the gold that they burnt up God actually had a purpose for it. The gold that the Egyptians said, here, go ahead and take it and leave, God had a purpose to use it, but instead they misused it. 
do not misuse your blessing whatever that may be if it's money if it is time if it is a relationship don't get into a habit of misusing a blessing that god has intended to use amen you don't know how god is going to use that thing whatever it may be and though it's in your hands right now do not squander it do not eat up your seed do not burn up your seed in the fire because god intends to use it he has a plan for it you may not have a plan for it but god has a plan for it god had given them a weighty and valuable item in abundance and they turned around and made it into something that they can worship instead of god they literally chanted around this golden calf and was like yay the golden calf delivered us from the egyptians when they know it was god they know that god had literally sent a plague sent winds sent darkness all of these things and they have been slaves forever and the lord is talking to moses up in the mountains and the lord is like uh you need to go ahead and get them people because i'm about to destroy them i can't believe i even did this in the first place and moses is like hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on don't do that right now because if you do that they're gonna say well the lord only brought us out into the wilderness to kill us and you don't want to be that god and moses was so close with the lord that if the bible says that the lord changed his mind once moses presented that argument but there were still consequences that these people had to face. Moses came off that mountain with mad. I mean, big mad. The word says, if at first, for whatever reason, I don't know why I just did not even know this part. But Moses went down there, yelled at these people so bad. He had took that calf, threw it in the fire, then put out the fire, crushed it into a powder, gold, mind you, crushed it into a powder, threw it into water and made them drink it. I don't know how mad you gotta be, but to do all of those steps, <laughs> to do all of those steps, like Moses was big, big mad and these people deserved it. Like they were really tripping. And then on top of that, they actually did have to go go under like some killing. Like I said, 3000 people actually died after that incident. And if you want more details on that, go into the word and read it yourself. But understand that the way things used to be, if you go ahead and tamper with anything other than what the Lord said to put your hand on, that's the consequence. Now we live in a very ratchet city world right now where we got, you know, all these crazy things going on and people think that they could be messy and messy. Hey, that's none of my business. But what I will say is you might be, you might want to be careful with it, whatever it is you're playing with. Why did they decide to make a calf? Like, it seems like they would make something that, like, the Egyptian gods, like, seem so big, like a horse or, like, something huge. But I'm thinking, in my head, I'm like, well, maybe they only had enough jewelry to make a calf. But that's not actually true. So I did a little research, and it says because the selection of a calf god was probably inspired by the Egyptian bull gods, Apis or Hapis, believed to be a living manifestation of the Egyptian god, Ptah. So... They are only quite literally doing exactly what they've always done. They have always known to worship an Egyptian god. They've always ever known to worship a god that they could see, that they could physically feel, maybe carry around. And that's what they're doing. But they're just taking in the old rituals of the past and bringing it into their present. They're taking in a, an old tradition from what they used to do and making it what they currently do. And they don't even know that they're making the, their business bad with the Lord as they're doing this thing. And so whatever it is that God has bringing you to, understand that you cannot take your old rituals back you cannot take your old rituals with you to where you're going you're going forward and you god does not want you to start walking backward and grabbing up those things old mindsets old habits old depression old anxiety old this and old that he doesn't want you bringing all that stuff into your new place because guess what that's gonna make your business bad with the lord that's gonna ruin what it is that he has for you that's going to tarnish what it is that he's got for you don't mess it up don't misuse your blessing don't burn it up in the fire don't even if you have an errand don't give it to your errand understand that god gave you favor for you it's not always for everybody else to take hold of your favor if it's a business plan that he gave you maybe you have a fun business friend in your circle maybe it's not to give it to them it's to it's for you to hold on to yourself amen until god gives you further instructions so Understand that if God has delivered you from a person, a job, a mental state, a friendship, abusive relationship, be careful not to go back. And it's not just to not go back to that person because we understand like, yeah, maybe you've exited a person's life, but you ever notice how an abused person normally goes back to some sort of an abusive relationship? In this new season, God has given you something that you have literally never had before. Don't go back to those old states that you used to be at, like a dog returning back to its vomit, amen? So 
So that's the word today. I love you so much. And if this word was for you or for a friend, make sure you share it and like it and subscribe to this channel. I love you. Bye.